I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Yeah, man. God is in the blessing business all day, every day. God got hundreds of millions of blessings that he passes out every day. All I want to do is be the recipient that I'm the recipient of what he has for me. That's all I want. I just want God's favor, and I go. I want God's blessings. You know, of course, I need his mercy and his grace, but I just want his blessing and his favor. I want, I want that in my life because it does things for me that I'm absolutely incapable of doing for myself. And I've been a recipient of many of those. And you can be the recipient of them, too. You already are, really. Really, you already are. If you're getting up every morning, that's a blessing. If you're getting one day closer to anything you're trying to accomplish, that's a blessing. But now, let, let, me, let, let me talk to you about this part right here, folks, because this is the part that messes people up a great deal. What happens when you get off track? What is that? What does that mean when you get off track? See, I've been off track, I can't tell you how many times. And it happens in so many aspects of your life. But but what is it that makes getting off track so debilitating to some people? You know, there are some people who once they off track, they off course, they off the dream, they on to something else. And you cannot allow the fact that you've gotten off track to stop you. Can I tell you something? Everybody gets off track. Nobody does a diet exactly, meal per meal, calorie by calorie exact. Everybody makes mistakes. But somehow, there are people who have made a success of themselves. There are people who are living their life's dreams. There are people who lose weight in spite of getting off track. See, what happens when you get off track, here's the simple thing to do. The simple thing is just to get back on track. Yeah, that's, that's, but that's easier said than done, ain't it, Steve? Yeah, because see, people, when you get off track, here's some of the things that happen. See, you get the, here come the naysayers, some of them from the outside, some of them internally. Here's what gets said when you get off track. See, I told you. 
I told you. You know, you, you, you start hearing that. It's not for you. Okay? This is all just because you got off track. It's not for you. Okay, here's another one. It ain't meant to be. You can hear it or you can say it. Well, I guess it's just not meant to be. These are all things that people say to themselves once they get off track. You can't do it. Well, I don't guess I can do it. Here's another one. I thought you said that you was going to make it. You know, I was sure hoping I could have made it. It comes external or internal, but these are just some of the things that say. I thought you said you was going to lose weight. Well, you know, I had tried to lose some weight. I'm just going down the list of some of the things that goes through a person's mind when they get off track. But let me ask you a question. though: Who made the rule that when you get off track, you can't get back on? Who, who made that rule? Where is that written that once you get off track, you can't get back on? See, because I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's no such rule. As a matter of fact, it's, it's quite the opposite. See, everybody in pursuit of a dream, a goal, an aspiration, or a mission is going to get off track sometimes. You're going to get derailed. There are going to be days where you're not going to get it right. There are going to be days where you feel like giving up. There's going to be days when you're just going to flat out get it wrong. That's the journey. But let me tell you something. Every successful person that I know, ever met, talked to, sat out and chopped it up with, have shared one thing in common. We all get off track. We all get it wrong along the way. I don't care who the person is. The president got it wrong along the way. Your pastor got it wrong along the way. Choir director Gwai got it wrong along the way. The principal at your school got it wrong along the way. The valedictorian of your class got it wrong along the way. The star of the team got it wrong along the way. They've all been off track. Your boss down at your job, he got it wrong along the way. Your immediate supervisor got it wrong along the way. Everybody I know that has any measure of success in every in every level that you call success, however you want to label it, has gotten off track. As a matter of fact, it's impossible. Listen to me. It is impossible not to get off track in pursuit of your dreams, goals, visions, aspirations. It is impossible. Don't you let nobody tell you that they got through life unscathed, that they made it because they was just so determined and I would let nothing turn me back. Yeah, you might not have let nothing turn you back because you're here. Oh, but you thought about it. Oh, you thought about it on days when you was off track. But see, people don't like to tell the whole story. They just want you to think as much as you can about them. So when they tell you their story, they leave out, the, the, the stuff along the way. It was just hard work and determination that got me here. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was the fact that you got off track and the grace and mercy of God allowed you to get back on. His forgiveness allowed you to get back on because you would not believe what some of the people have done. So when you get off track, don't allow the naysayers outside and the big naysayer inside because let me tell you something. The biggest naysayer of them all comes from inside. See, it don't matter what other people say out there. It takes some time for you to learn this, and I understand, because it took me some time to learn it. See, I have a lot of naysayers out there, but I ain't operating for them. I operate and function for the ones that love me, for the ones that get me, for the ones that understand what I'm really trying to do. And so don't you be the one that doesn't allow yourself to get back on track when you get off track. Because like I said, who made the rule up that you can't get back on track? There's no such rule out there. Stop stopping yourself from getting it right. 
So what you started the diet at the beginning of the year and you already off? Start another one. Start over. Try it again. Don't ever stop trying. If you stop trying, you can't make it. But if you never give up the effort, if you never give up and say it's over, it ain't over. You heard the saying, it ain't over to the fat lady saying, I never invite her. She's not invited. It ain't over to the fat lady saying, I don't know where the fat lady stay. I have not sent her an invitation to none of my events. She's not welcome here. She didn't ask me a couple of times, how come I never get invited? Because you're going to start saying it. And I ain't got time for that. All right? Stop inviting the fat lady to all your events. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen and everybody else, may I have your attention, please? This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Make no mistake about it. Here it is. There ain't nothing else to this. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Steve. Carla Pharrell. Good morning, Steve. Hey, crew. Junior. Morning, uh. Mm-hmm. Tommy Tom. Big doggy dog. Sitting up in here trying to be about it. Yes, sir. Hustle and flow. That's it. Yeah. How you feeling, Steve? Uh, you know, I'm actually uh really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, excited. It's a new day. Yeah. I woke up. I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. Amen. I got some Amen. plans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got some uh, dreams and stuff that I want to accomplish. Some visions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got the stuff written down. I've been reworking everything. Now, I'm going to what... write some more stuff down this week. What does you a know? Ma- man like you who has so much and who has been blessed so wonderfully and beautifully, what else do you dream about? Oh, Just for I the got... people, you know? I got some bigger stuff. You know, I want to. I want to do some things to change some other people's lives. Okay. Um, Giving. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, that's right. Uh, Tommy, we on that list. You know. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> we are too sure. Uh-huh. They're trying to act like it's just for the boys. The list <laughs> Thank years. you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Actually been on the list. You don't have to worry about getting on there. Uh, I'm, I'm available for anybody who want to do something big. Man. You know, I'm with it. <laughs> Anybody want to do something big? Uh, I'm looking to uh, grow uh, mm-hmm. my company uh, as an international businessman. Okay. Uh, that's the thing that I've laid claim to. Well, you know why I asked you that, though. Why? Because you know, people people need to know, you know, you can still dream. Never stop dreaming and never stop, you know, believing in yourself. And, you know, just no because, matter how big. Yeah, no matter yeah. how big you no. are. You have a lot, but oh. there's God, our God is big and, you mm-hmm. know, he can do a, a, over and well, above, you know. There's a scripture that says um, a, a man without a dream or a vision shall perish. Mm-hmm. So you can't stop dreaming and you can't stop having visions because I mean, if you don't dream of nothing, if you if you don't want nothing else, what what what's what's to waking up for? Yeah, then go right. ahead and just go on. What you here for today? Huh? Go on on. Taking up space. <laughs> yeah. Just sitting there ain't doing that. Right. Mm. Yeah, man. You're because you've got to. Yeah, man. You know. You know, man. You have to press and and I suggest that people aim extremely high. I, I I I think people should you should want stuff that's in your imagination. Uh-huh. Go way over there. Mm-hmm. If it's in your imagination, if you've ever imagined it, want it, mm. want it. That's that's where your real life is at. It's in your imagination. Mm-hmm. So all the things that you have now. That you currently have, you you've dreamt about them at some point in time. Yeah, at at one point in time, even when I even even though some of this stuff I didn't even know existed. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of it just show up it just, just show because up. you was pushing hard yeah. for other things. Can I tell you? Okay, when we come back, can I share with you what that really is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I have a great okay, story great. for you too, Steve. Okay, we'll all right. When back. we come back, I'll tell you what that is. We'll be right back at thirty-two after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for something funny now, Steve. I wanted to ask you and and the guys as well. Uh, what's the weirdest or the craziest thing you were caught doing red-handed? Something you know you weren't supposed to do, but it was crazy though. Maybe it was something you were looking up online, or maybe it was an embarrassing moment in the bathroom you told us about when you were a yes. Your- <laughs> 
<laughs> at your girlfriend's house one time and you had a real bad uh, explosion. Uh, <laughs> So anything, something that happened during, you know, on the job. I'm I mean, I've done everything. Job. I mean, which yeah. one you want? Oh, Red handed, yeah. uh, stealing, <laughs> busted. <laughs> you under arrest. You have so Everybody many down. Yes. I've heard all these statements in my life. <laughs> <laughs> halt right there. Put your chance. You hands up. Yeah, I've had all. Which one you want? Uh, which one of them you want? Something funny. Shelly, wasn't none of it funny. Oh. Getting oh, busted well, you. Funny. Getting busted just ain't funny, right? <laughs> well, At the time. Have you been caught butt naked on? Have you been caught butt naked? <laughs> no, I ain't never been caught butt naked. That's your I, story, Tommy, huh? Well, oh. you know, I want it. <laughs> Wait. Well, I'll tell you one time. <laughs> I, I would. Okay. I, you know, I, I got I knew caught. It. I knew but it. I wanted to get caught. Uh-huh. Oh, what do you mean? I was at the girl's house one time. <laughs> she was at work. Uh-huh. And uh, I told her I was going to cook for her when she came in. So I got over to her house and set it all up. And uh, I cooked everything. You know, I cooked pretty good, you know. I was young. I was a young dude then. Mm-hmm. So she had a duplex townhouse. The kitchen, living room downstairs. Two bedrooms was upstairs. And uh, I decided to go on upstairs and wait for her. You know, oh. I done done all this cooking all afternoon. And, uh. So I just had a trail of clothes all the way up the steps. Okay. Come on. I'm under the cover naked. Okay. Looking like new money. Uh-huh. Yeah. Showered. Yeah. I got so much baby oil on me. This was before I knew how to handle baby oil. <laughs> uh-huh. I had so much baby oil on me, I done ruined her sheets. <laughs> just oily. <laughs> yeah. All in my hair. Uh-huh. I had excess baby oil. I, I didn't know what I was doing then. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was picking up the clothes, coming up still laughing. You so crazy. Oh, you so crazy. Oh, you know, I had, you know, one sock, then another sock. Mm-hmm. You know, belt, you know, drawers. <laughs> you know, shirt, just <laughs> cap. All that placed up the steps. Uh-huh. And last thing was the drawers. Yeah. She got up there, and I snatched the covers off. I'm butt naked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But I got so much oil on me. Yeah. Uh-huh. All she said was, oh, my God, look at my sheets. Mm. I said, your sheets? <laughs> look at you all see all this laying on these damn oh, sheets? Is. What is you talking about your sheets for? Oh. But you need to worry about rhyme with sheets. But that that's, it's, I don't know what you're talking about. Look at all these sheets. She was so mad. Yeah. Because uh-huh. I had baby oil on the sheets. Grief. She missed the point. Yeah. Of all the of whole them. damn point. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. So what ended up happening? Not a damn thing. She mad. Real attitude, too, about her <laughs> sheets. About some sheets. Must have been sad. So I got sad? up, you know. No, hell no. Just regular ass cotton sheets. Mm. <laughs> now I'm going down. I got to collect all my stuff all the <laughs> way back down these damn steps. <laughs> Ain't this about nothing. I'm putting stuff on on the stairway. As I, so when I got to the bottom, I was fully dressed. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Because I had took the stuff off strategically, so I just put it back on the same way. Got my drawers. Yeah. Yeah. My pants. Yeah, your order. My shirt. Yeah. yeah. My socks. Yeah. My shoes. By the time I got to the bottom, I just got on dress. Went on and got in my car. Went on home. <laughs> Hell. You laughed? Yeah, what I, What you not finna do is be mad at me all this damn time. Buy some speech. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the meal, you Hey, cooked? the spaghetti and the salad in the refrigerator. Oh! <laughs> Got an attitude. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with you. So you got you put on your clothes and got in your car and went home. What happened the next day? Did you no, talk no, to I her? we ain't talk for a while. Oh, okay. Then she called me. She said, "So I ain't heard from you. Uh-huh. You ain't heard from me. <laughs> now you know she called my apartment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ain't heard from you because you know, hate to tell y'all this." <laughs> wasn't no cell phones back then. <laughs> I ain't heard from you. I said, well, hey, well, what you, what you want to hear from me? I spent all that time cooking you a meal and all you complained about is shit. I'm sorry. No, nah, hell, nah. I'm sorry. Nothing. Nah. I see how you are. Nah. I see your ass crazy. I ain't finna get involved with you. Uh, so that, so was, that it. was it. That was yeah. it? Yeah, never went nowhere. Wow. Did you buy her some new sheets? 
No. Buy her some sheet. Wash them. <laughs> hey, what number baby on? <laughs> grease. That's kind of hard to get out. Yeah, it was huh? grease, Steve. <laughs> That's kind of hard to get out. That ain't dog. It they bed sheets. But you complain. You missed the point. Skip, thank you for cooking a meal. Yeah, all that. All this here. None of that. She was unappreciative. You know, she but laughing you know up the though. steps at the clothes. But get up there now. She, she she hit a switch so hard. She just that damn mad about this baby oil on these sheets. I tell you what. I tell you what. I ain't going to stop doing. I ain't going to stop using baby oil. I promise you. That. But that, that's what I bet you that. I might be a little, a, a, a little rookie at it now because I'm 21. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what. I'm going to learn how to work this baby oil. Well, see, that taught at, you a lesson. Yeah, at, well, at 61, yeah. I am a baby oil specialist. <laughs> I'm a boss, baby. Yeah. A B-O-S. A baby oil. something about him. Baby oil specialist. It's something about you and baby oil. He just he I did I tell you about the time Carla I I had to come get him, he just slipped and what fell he butt memory? naked what? in baby oil. Wait what? what? No, oh. you didn't tell her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Steve, you didn't mention this at all. Yeah, this this is tell him about the time I had to come get you. You didn't call because you fell, and <laughs> you stand you you in a puddle of baby oil butt naked. Tell him about that part. Oh, so you saw him butt baby. naked, Tommy? I didn't call what? him. I hollered out. Oh. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ain't nobody uh, call oh him. God. He came over. Coming up. <laughs> coming up next is Run That Prank Back. More <laughs> ignorance from this ignorance show <laughs> right oh. after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Nev? Six to ten. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Six to ten. <laughs> yeah. You got to be aggressive with it, y'all. Now watch this right here. Six to ten. <laughs> Run that cat. Sorry. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I was trying to speak to Latrenda, please. This is Latrenda. Who is hey, this? Uh, hey, you work at the sandwich shop? Yes, I do. Who is this? Okay, was you there? Did you work last Wednesday, like from six to, I guess six to close? Yeah, I work every Wednesday. Yeah, who who is this? Hey, my name is Ralph, uh, and I I, I basically um uh, uh you know looked around to try and get your phone number. I got a bit of a complaint. Ralph, right. wait, 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 wait. You calling me with a complaint on my cell phone? Who gave you my number? Uh, I've done the research to get your number, ma'am. And what I'm calling you about is while I was in there getting a sandwich and eating, I'm realizing that. You came out of the bathroom without washing your hands. And when well, she- first of all, you need to be calling the corporate headquarters if you got a complaint. Or you call that 800 number on the back of your receipt. Don't be calling my cell phone. Whoever gave you gave you my cell phone, I'm going to whoop they Hey, listen, and- listen. The problem is is that you coming out not washing your hands. No, no. The problem, I don't never come out and not wash my hands, first of all. You I've, been uh, working this- at, I've been working there for three years. Okay. Don't be coming at me with no bull****. That I hadn't came out and I washed my hands. I guess you ain't been washing your d- hands for no d- three years, and you 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 coming out, you know, unsanitized, and this way you treating people. Hold on, hold on. Don't first of all, don't be calling my d- phone talking about I I ain't wash my hands. Like I said, I've been there three years. I've been employee of the month six times. Don't be coming to me with none of this bull. I don't know like, how don't you employee of the month. You must be the nasty employee of the month because you're coming out. You're not washing your hands. I saw you scratch who your the, head who and the your hell face. Is this? And you who ain't putting no d- gloves on. Who is? I always put gloves on my hands. And we, you ain't had no gloves on there last week. I don't, know, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but don't be calling my d- phone with this. D- you need to be calling headquarters if you got a complaint. I tell you what, I'm going to call headquarters. I'm coming there tomorrow to see if you're going to be up in there with some gloves on or you're going to come out there to, out of the bathroom again with the same thing. Come on no. up there. I'm going to be there from 6 to close. 6 to close. And I bet you if you come up there tomorrow, I'm going to make a sandwich out your you going to do what? I'm going to make a sandwich out your Who you think you're talking to? Yo, you said your name was Ralph, right? Don't be calling my phone with this Hey, let me tell you something. All I'm saying to you is this right here. If I come up in there tomorrow and find out you ain't got them gloves on, you gonna mess around and get whooped. Oh, uh, you gonna whoop my? You gonna whoop six to ten? I'm gonna be up there from six to ten, and I ain't gonna call nobody. I ain't calling my brothers, my cousins, my uncles, or nothing. I'm gonna whoop your by myself. Excuse me, you gonna you 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 finna try to take on a man? I'm gonna whoop your by myself. That's what I said. You need to get your little nasty behind in the bathroom and wash your hands six and keep and put a or put one of them nets ten. on your head six so you don't be coming ten. up there some people food like that. Bring your on up there six to ten.
10, you know where I work, 6 to 10, and I'm going to whoop your Who you think you talking to? I don't even know who the you are, but I'm going to know your tomorrow. I'm going to know you tomorrow. Bring your on up there, 6 to 10, and I'm going to whoop your I'm coming up there tomorrow. Come on. Come I'm on. coming up there tomorrow. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you how to be sanitized. I'm going to be with some gloves on. Do you hear me? You're going to be my... And you steady talking about whooping my... That's who? Bring your up there. And we're going to see who's going to get that whoop. What kind of man is you anyways to be talking about fighting a woman? You a... And you a... What, what you call me? A... B... T... H... I'm coming up there to see you tomorrow. Is you go, is you gonna be ready when I get up there? What kind of you anyway? Gonna call up here so much you gonna fight female over some hand wash? Bring your and I'm gonna show you what it is. Six to ten. I'm gonna be here. At six. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be here at five forty-five. Bring your up here before I clock in, and I'm gonna whoop your. Who you think you talking to? Me? I don't give a who I'm talking to. Bring up here tomorrow, six to ten. You gonna see? You gonna see what's up? I got one more thing to say to you before I come up there tomorrow. I don't give a f you got to say. I don't care. I'm gonna whoop your. F say that. I got. I got one more thing I need what? to say. What Listen you got to me. To say? What? Are you listening? What? What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Who you? You say who? <laughs> this is who? <laughs> Hey, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Man. You just got pranked by your coworker. Man, you man, see, man, y'all got me, man. That's all right. Six to ten tomorrow. I got something for her. She gonna have to watch her back every hour, every hour on the hour. I got something for her. I ain't gonna hurt her, but I'm definitely gonna do it in tomorrow. Believe that. Was you ready though? I was. Hell yeah, I was gonna whoop. Go, man. <laughs> You don't even know what you had in store for you. You was going to have to have your uncle come pull me off, and that probably wouldn't have been enough either. <laughs> hey, I got one more thing to ask you, baby girl. What What's is up? what is the baddest radio station in the land? You already know, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> 16, baby! <laughs> come on down. Come on down here, 16. I'm here, I'm here. I know. Come on down here. Come on. I gave you my hours. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Come on. 6 p.m. Yeah. I start. Yeah. I usually come in five minutes early, wash my hands. Mm. Play too much, nephew. Mm. All right, y'all. Check it out. Down. Knoxville Civic Auditorium. The nephew will be nephew will be there along with my boy Bruce Bruce. That's Friday. That's this Friday, y'all. April 19th is going down. That's good Friday. Good Friday. The nephew will be in the building. And then Virginia Beach Comedy Club, May 2nd through the 4th. They all laying in the cut. I'm on my way. Now, Uncle Steve, check this out. Texarkana. Texas, Arkansas, right there on the border. The nephew yep. going to the Texarkana Convention Center. Now, Unc, tickets are on sale, Unc. In Texarkana, if you, you, know, you know, we got a lot of older people that don't want to go online to get no tickets. They want to physically go buy their tickets. So, uh, uh -oh. tickets on sale at the Miracle Closet and also at GQ Fashion. Uh -oh. Right there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm Miracle right Closet. <laughs> yeah, come on. Because after you get it out of there, it's, that's how it's going to look on. <laughs> like a miracle. And the GQ Closet. No, GQ Fashion. GQ Fashion and the Miracle mm -hmm. Closet. There it is. I'll be damned. <laughs> Tommy, you ought to go there and get your outfit from GQ and then wear it on stage. That'd be great promotion, man. It'll prove that you love the city. Uh -huh. So you, you ought to go mean. get your outfit from GQ. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah man. So go in nice like the day before, go on in and get me something to wear. Yeah. <laughs> get, get me something out of Miracle Cloud and then get me something else out of GQ fast. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Man. But... You've always taught me to have my outfit ready when I get to the city. Yeah, but I want you to now, since they selling your tickets go at GQ buy. headquarters. Yeah, well, nobody selling his tickets. I want you to go down there and buy your your outfit from them and wear it. <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, Steve, it is time for Comedy Roulette. Uh, before we get Yes, it break. is today. <laughs> Let's <Yes>. do it. <laughs> Jay. All right, Comedy Roulette, very serious. Comedy Roulette, very serious. Take four subjects, mm-hmm. put them on a wheel, mm-hmm. yeah. spun the wheel. Mm-hmm. That's right, spun it. <laughs> Where'd stop? Because we are great at doing this. Mm-hmm. We're comedians. We'll do the damn thing. Do it. All right, here we go with the subjects. The party was off the chain. In fact, as soon as you left, blank, blank happened. Oh. Mm, Blank Mm. happened. Mm. All right. Number two, when to shut up. Mm. Okay. (laughs) Number three, old guys who live alone. That would be Jay. (laughs) Number four, we're we're just being nice. The preacher's wife can't sing. All right. Uh, We can do that, too. Come on, cat. Spin it. (laughs) Oh. Is it going to be on Jay? Mm. Single guys, single guys who live alone. Preacher's wife. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 number one, uh, the party was off the chain. In fact, as soon as you left, oh my God. blank happened. <laughs> Dude, this was a party. As soon as you left, the preacher's wife's wig got caught in the ceiling fan. Man, it was going round and round and round. You should have been there, dude. They couldn't get that fan off. They couldn't get that fan off, man. man. Was she was just chasing it. It was on high. Oh, my God. You should have been there, man. So you left. Man, that party was off the chain, man. In fact, as soon as you left, Uncle Herman got stuck in the bathroom door. We couldn't, we couldn't go to the restroom none the rest oh, of that man. night. Man, he's blocked. I, somebody pushed me. No. Oh, man, the party was off the chain. And let me tell you something. As soon as you left, dog, uh-huh. as soon as you left, somebody wastes all the whiskey on the floor. We mopped it up and wrung it out in the pitcher. Man, let me tell you something. Whiskey and mop water is the coldest thing Ew. I have ever had. Boy, you talking about you missed something. I'm trying to tell you. Whiskey, whiskey, mop water. Lord have mercy. Nasty. <laughs> Boy, you think that was good? Huh? Let me tell you, this party, this party was off the chain. Uh-huh. This party was just, soon as you left. Uh-huh. I'm talking about it wasn't five minutes after you walked out the door. Keisha started stripping oh. on top of the washing machine. Ooh. Boy, uh, I'm trying to Keisha. tell Keisha. you. Come on, Cut that spin cycle on and was stripping. Oh. Boy, Man. girl came in there, boy. Come on, Jay, one minute. Man, that was a party. As soon as you left, they had a wheelchair race, right? <laughs> they went out in the street, and both of them got hit by ice cream truck. Man, you should have seen it. What? Jay! Hey. <laughs> it's funny. This party was something to change. Matter of fact, as soon as you left, uh, <laughs> Sister Warren front tube shot at Herman Drake. <laughs> Man, <laughs> and he took a sip. Now we just wait on him to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. That party, the party was so off the chain. As soon as you left, man, everybody got hungry. I don't know what made Butchie got the fish out the aquarium and fried it. The <laughs> oh. tiger fish, two Oscars, and an algae eater. I ain't lying to you. That algae eater was good. <laughs> Little hot sauce. All right, close it out, Steve. Hurry. <laughs> Boy, that party last night, bro. Right after you, cha- right after you left, Uncle Tate came in and had a one woman wet t shirt. Contact <laughs> with Sheila Neal. Right. We gotta go. I thought I just pulled it right on her, man. I said, I'll be there. All right, Steve, let's let's get to today's headlines, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Miss Ann Tripp. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, boy, this is Ann Tripp with the news. Well, here we go. Special counsel Robert Mueller's 448-page report, 448 pages on the Russian election meddling is now out there for anybody who cares to read it. And even with all its redactions or blocking out, the report still does detail instances in which President Trump apparently directed other people in his administration to try to either influence or curtail the probe. But the report stops just short of accusing Trump of committing an actual crime. It also shows that there were numerous contacts between the Russian government and the Trump campaign. Again, the report concludes, though, that there was not enough evidence to prove any kind of collusion. Now, the question of obstruction of justice, though, remained open. And House Judiciary Committee Chairman Adam Schiff says there's a message in that. Those acts of obstruction of justice, whether they are criminal or not, 
are deeply alarming in the president of the United States. And it's clear that special counsel Mueller wanted the Congress to consider the repercussions and the consequences. It is clear the special counsel believed that no one was above the law, and that includes the president of the United States. Nevertheless, the president of the United States uh, is uh, seeing, you know, a lot of vindication in this. He told an audience that uh, he was found innocent and exonerated. It was a wounded warrior's event. And now the president is pushing for an investigation into the investigation. In other words, how the Mueller investigation got started. National Security Advisor John Bolton says that the U.S. is going to start restricting the amount of money that Cubans can send to relatives on the island. And Bolton says that the new rules will also restrict non-family travel to Cuba. Also, he says U.S. courts are going to now be able to consider lawsuits against foreign companies doing business on properties that Castro seized from Americans after that 1959 Cuban revolution. The publisher of a small Alabama newspaper being talked about all over the Internet. Goodlow Sutton is the publisher of something called the Democrat Reporter, based in the southwestern part of that state. He wrote an editorial calling for white supremacists to, quote, go on night rides again, saying that, quote, if we could get the Klan to go up there and clean out D.C., we'd all be better off. We'll get the hemp roats out, loop them over a tall limb, and hang all of them. This guy claims that the Klan only killed a few people and they were only violent when they needed to be and then went on to compare the Klan to the oldest terrorist organization in the U.S. to the NAACP, saying they're the same. The University of Mississippi's now removed Goodlow Sutton from his place in the school's communications hall of fame. U.S. Justice Department extremely critical of conditions of Alabama's prisons. Ice Cube's three-on-three basketball league reportedly signing a deal to air its games on CBS this summer, furthering the entertainer and movie maker's efforts to become a sports industry mogul. And today is National Humor Day. Well, I guess that's what they mean by good riddance to bad rubbish. <laughs> I guess you what they mean when they say into each life some ugly must fall. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve is here, of course, with things you'll see on Easter Sunday. I've been going to church a lot of years on Easter, and it's the most fascinating time for me. Because you see stuff at the church that you really shouldn't see. Like people in lime green that that should not be in lime green. You're wrong for this. I mean, it's shocking. A lot of lime, a little bit of lime goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> you got that go. little baby, beautiful black baby, walking around with that day glow lemon yellow dress on. <laughs> day glow lemon yellow. Yeah. You're going to see colors that you did not know existed. <laughs> I mean, you just, what is that, purplish? <laughs> what? Herpolish. What is that, purplish? Uh, that's orange and purple. Colors. Yeah, that's when you be going, what is that? That's orangutan. <laughs> what? Orangutan. <laughs> you just don't know what's going on. You going to see little boys uh-huh. with knickers on because they mama thought it was cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And little boy can't go around the rest of them boys. <laughs> your punk ass doing with them pants on. Why you paying what, them to your What ankle? is you? You a pilgrim? <laughs> a pilgrim. <laughs> Here's something else you going to see. Way. Way too many barrettes in this baby's head. Oh, man. Oh, I've seen that. It's yeah. just way too many damn barrettes in this baby head. It's just over, baby walking over around them. just clacking. <laughs> Her head heavy. Uh huh. Uh huh. She crying. She got headache. Here's something you're gonna see at somebody's house. What? That's just too much damn pineapple on that head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Shouldn't have been here with all this damn pineapple. Where, where the ham at? You can't see the ham. Trying to disguise this dry ass ham. <laughs> <laughs> what else, Steve, you're going to see? You're going to see an Easter bunny mm. in street shoes. Oh, he's going to have Because, you know, in the hood, you don't have the money for the feet, too. Yeah, you don't have the bunny feet. For the entire album. He just up in here with some black Tom McCann street shoes on. He got some flotions on. New balance. 
No, Flosham. No, no. Street Flosham. shoes, baby. I Heels. know. <laughs> Flosham. <laughs> You're going to see a fat man Uh with a too small jacket on and a little man with a too big jacket on. (laughs) Yep, you you always see that. (laughs) All right, coming up at 34 after the hour, J. Anthony Brown is here to murder another hit. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, All right, Steve, he's here. Please introduce J. Anthony Brown to murder. J. Anthony Brown. (laughs) Come on, Jay. <laughs> All right, you can check me out, J Spot Comedy Club, on Tuesday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. In keeping with the vein of Easter, uh, Steve, that you have, why not do an Easter song mm. that's going to set it off, that's going to say it all? Because it's the day we go crazy with what we have to wear. Hit it. All right, fellas, I know it's Easter time. I know you're laying that stuff out on the bed. Standing back in the drawer, saying to yourself, wait till they see me in this. Shoe down at the bottom, hat in the top of your suit. Got your shirt up under the suit. You ready? You gon' kill him. It's Easter Sunday. I can't believe those awful suits I see. That color's out on ya. Hot yellow, pink stripe, and sprite can green plus coyote gray. Hey, bitch, you got magic one. in America, huh? 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 <laughs> Lay that out the night before. I'm finna kill him. I'm finna kill him. Just gonna hurt him on each. Boy. I remember one year, man, I got me a white suit. My mama told me, boy, I don't want you to get no white suit. Mm-hmm. I had paper out. I get me, I'm getting the white suit. White suit, I only had one pair of shoes. They was black. So I wanted a black shirt. Couldn't find a black shirt. Bought a white shirt and a box of Rit dye. Tried to die. And dyed it. I dyed <laughs> the shirt. In church. Got hot. The dye uh-huh. bleeding out the shirt into the suit. <laughs> oh, what? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Your mother told you. She told you. <laughs> I'm sitting up in here, man, with this cheap ass shirt. I got on it. It's sweating. It, it's leaking. The dye is leaking onto the suit. <laughs> That's man, crazy. I was so hurt. Now my suit got these gray blotches on it. <laughs> oh, man. And you know, this is way full camouflage. You know, <laughs> I could not play at all. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going down Easter. You're absolutely right, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's I don't know. I wear jeans it's on Easter. Crowded. It's too crowded. I you, you wear jeans on Easter? I wear jeans on Easter, man. But Ooh, everybody like. else wear all, yeah. Hey, I try to go to be... the earliest service they got. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. They used to have yeah. sunrise service. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Sunrise. Show. Sunrise. Y'all know. Show. Look, look, Shirley, don't act surprised. You know HR, he tried to act eccentric. <laughs> What's HR? Human HR. resources? Mm-mm. Half rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what they got to do with what he wear to church for Easter, though? I mean, why he didn't tell us that? I wear jeans on church, you know. I do. I wear jeans. A lot of people wear jeans. Yeah, a lot I'm of people do. Well back in Cleveland. Kate would have beat your ass. You'd have put but, some yeah. on track. But just by yeah, the way I was raised, I can't. Changed. It's hard to do that still. Yeah, it didn't yeah. change, but you know. But it's, yeah, church has changed. Though. Yeah, it's no. changed a lot. I can't oh, wear I'm jeans at church. No. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, it's better yeah. that people can come to church as they as are. As you are. That's what it's yeah. about. Yeah, it but it ain't increased. It ain't increased traffic at church. 
You think it's more people going to church now than then? With Trump in the White House? Yep. <laughs> All right, the nephew has a prank phone call coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up next, the king is in the building, a prank phone call. What you got, man? All right, you in my house. Now, my grandmom used to say, as far as you in my house, yeah. Yeah. we will serve the Lord. That ain't got nothing to do with this here. The, the title of this here is You in My House. I'm going to let you have it. I am the prank phone call king from what they say. You think that's stupid. Wait till February. February 7th. February. Say it with me, Carl. February. February. If you, my grandmama said, if you make it through January, oh, every February. Let's go, Cat. You can march on through the <laughs> April and May. you going to remember this. If you make it through January and February, you can march on through the April and May. Come on, Cat. Good God Almighty. Hello. Hey, this is uh, this Preston. Where y'all? Where did y'all leave the key at? Uh, I'm I'm about two hours out. And you got the wrong number, bro. Call him back. Yeah, is is this Troy? Yeah, it's Troy. Who there? Hey, this is this. I'm Preston, man. Listen, I'm on my way to the house. I'm about two hours out. Where, where did y'all leave the key at, man? Hold on, wait. You hold on. Let me get up. You on your way to what house? I'm on my way there. Are you are you at you at the house? Uh, I'm in my house. Yeah. What, who, you, what did you say your name was? This is Preston. I uh. Okay. Okay. Hold on, man. I don't understand. Okay. I'm on my way to the house. Uh, yeah. You, what house? At, that's, my, that's my question. What house you talking about? Okay. You are you at six Pine Woods Drive? Yeah. That's my house. Okay. Okay. I don't understand that. All right. So listen, I'm I'm about two hours out, man. I got two U-Haul trucks. We in route there. We'll be there in about two hours. But but I thought y'all was out the house by now. I'm I'm kind of see where the key at. Out the house. What? Hold on, what, what, hold on, man. Let me get up. Let me get up. What, 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 now, hold on. What, what what you say? You 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 got two you haul trucks. What what you got? What you got them for? What's it? What's that now? I'm moving into the house. I, I I bought the house. You you moving into what? Okay. How you don't know I bought the house, man? You hold on, wait. What the house you talking about? Oh, uh, you on. Woods Drive. That's I bought this house from Tisdale. Yeah, Tisdale. Yeah, Tisdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tisdale. That's that's who that's who we that's who we got the house from. Wait, wait. You say you bought the house? Okay, wait a minute. You leased the house from Tisdale, right? Yeah, yeah. We right, right. We we still got about another year left in our lease. We 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 ain't out this house for another year. I mean, and we supposed to renew that. Okay, okay. We got a problem. Let me let me try to. Okay. Oh. Yeah. We bought. Now, we, oh, what? That's let me, let, me, let me get my wife on. I need to get my wife on the phone. Um, well, hold on, hold, hold on, a, hold on a minute. Uh-huh. Okay, so now Tisdale tell me that y'all supposed to be out the house, and I'm calling because he said y'all was gonna leave the key in a certain place. Tisdale so like that a lie. Tisdale ain't told you no like man. I need let me get Tisdale on the phone because because uh how we how he, he ain't man we ain't hearing nothing about no selling of no house or no nothing like that. Okay, well, I didn't. I didn't bought the house from Tisdale, and I'm on. I'm like I say, I'm. I'm two hours out. I might get there a little quicker. How soon do you think y'all can get the stuff? Get y'all stuff out the house. Get what stuff out? What house? Y'all gonna have to get y'all stuff out the house. Get what stuff? Shit? You a guy a lot of day. You think we gonna get? We 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 we. we look, like I say, man. Uh, we we need to get Tisdale on the phone and get this cleared up. You a mother? Your shit. I tell you what. You bring the U-Haul trucks if you want to. Y'all better take out back where you come from. I tell you that. I tell you that hey, much. Hey, hey, listen, man. Listen. The mistake. First of all, okay. You you arguing with me about my house? That's my house. No, Let's no. Get that all, tell, no, no, no. Now see, now I'm at. See, now you pissing me off. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you like I like like, like I'm gonna tell tell them. Ain't, 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 ain't none of this ain't going down the way you think it's gonna go down. You understand? Know we signed a lease to be in this house for a year. I mean, that's what we gonna do. We gonna be in this house for a whole year. You ain't gonna hey, be hey, here man, for listen, another no. year, so you okay, might as well go t- get yourself. We don't that. own the house no more. I own the house. You got to get your ass out, man. I'm two hours out. Yeah, man. I'm look, man. Hours, look, man. We, we look. Listen to me now. Listen. We done been in this house five years. Okay. We got one year left in this house. Okay. And look, ain't gonna be no moving in today. We can't. I, 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 I can't move my man. I got wife. I got kids. And shit, man. I, 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 I look. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's like it's like you said. You got. We got to talk tears there. But I'm telling you, man. You pull up today and. You haul, I swear for Lord, I'm gonna, I'm gonna whoop your. Okay. So you, 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 you done called me with all this. I ain't got no notice. 
or nothing. What, that, you know what I'm saying? But, but let me you ain't, you ain't, that ain't that never, I don't need to know you. We ain't talk to you later. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just here at one time agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, that's between you and Tiz there. But right now, I'm on my way to my house. And you got to get your out of my house. No, no, no. You on your way to my house. No, and I I'm tell on you my what, way if to you my house, house, if you, 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 you no, know, no, if you come to my house, you gonna get your ass handed to you. But let me let me say this: Wait, is your kids, is your, is your wife and kids there right now? They at church. Where your ass need to be? Okay, okay. Is is there any room in? What's in the garage? Any room in the garage? Can you move no, all no, your stuff? That wasn't my garage. You raggedy. Like I just told you, you pull up to my house, I'm gonna get some furniture moving in this. Hey man, let me tell you something. You, you getting your, you getting your black look. You man, getting your black look. look. And your man, wife, I ain't, ain't going no damn house. Where. Well, you come make me do it. You come make me do it. Move out my house today. What's in my garage? Man, what's in your garage? Do you tell me that? What's in your garage? Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow you to do this. Move all your stuff into the garage. No, no, no now. I'm, I'm gonna allow you to get your. Work. Okay. What I'm okay. So, I'm so I be... see. I see now. I see now. You want your whoop in front of your wife and kids. I oh, see so, that. Oh, so, oh, so you gonna whoop my? So that's what you gonna do? I tell you what. You bring them you house. You bring your wife, your kids, your dog. And you bring any about it. I whoop all your right here in front it's of my not, house. It's not your house. It's mine. I bought the. I bought the house from Man, look, I'm te- look. I tell you what. You meet me right in front of the yard. I'm gonna be right out here standing in my. I'm gonna whoop your to my robe and my house shoes. How about that? Don't tell me to move out of my house. Okay, and, 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 and I tell you, you what, you know better what, call Tim you know to get his ass over here to help you because you don't need told me to tell you. What? You don't need what you say? Do you know what else Tisdale told me to tell you? I tell you one thing. You can go and tell me whatever Tisdale told you, but I tell you one thing. I ain't moving out of my house today. I'm telling you that right now. Ain't going to be no moving out here. You say whatever Tisdale told you to tell you. I'm going to tell you this. Hear what Tisdale told me to tell you. Tisdale told me to tell you that this. Is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Troy, your wife and Tisdale got me to prank phone call you. The f- this man, this some boo. <laughs> this some <laughs> boo. This some boo. <laughs> man, <laughs> I done put my <laughs> pants on. I done put my <laughs> boots on. I'm waiting. I'm sitting right here in my <laughs> living room, looking out the <laughs> window, waiting for this. You all to pull up, cause I sure was gonna tear fire from your ass, boy. I tell you, man, I, I can't even go back to sleep now. Man, I, you done got me fired up. Hey Troy, I gotta ask you before I go, man. What is the baddest? And I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show, ain't that bad? <laughs> Come on. Okay. You give Keep it to me. The ignorant going. You really does. He, does he, he really does. <laughs> Hi, boy. You ignorant. Uh, <laughs> you ignorant for real. You stupid. My nephew, this is he is the king of prank. <laughs> you got to, you got to be stupid. The ignorant behind. can't go down. It's no. got to be up. <laughs> it's got to go That's up. That's level ignorance, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and it stay there. And it stays there. The ignorant go up. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, the strawberry letter right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, it is time for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, uh, submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letters. That simple, right, Steve? You know it. (laughs) Huh? Oh, what you keep asking me for. I love This is the most important announcement I make. (laughs) Man, send us your strawberry letter. (laughs) Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, I can't get back in bed with him. Subject, I can't get back in bed with him. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am dating a man that I consider to be my soulmate. We have a long-distance relationship, but we see each other often. He always comes to visit me, and I would always make sure that my house was clean. I would go out of my way to impress him. This past weekend, I went to visit him for the first time. After driving for four hours, I got to his house, and I was immediately shocked and disappointed by what I saw. His house was absolutely filthy. Before I could even hug him, I couldn't help but blurt out, I thought you cleaned up. Uh, We went back and forth on what he thought was clean and what my interpretation of clean was. I decided to do the cleaning myself and he agreed to help me. My first priority was to clean the bedroom where I'd be sleeping. I started with the bed to put clean sheets on it. 
as I pulled back the covers, I discovered a huge pea stain on his mattress. I almost got <laughs> sick from the sight and smell of it. I called him into the bedroom and he got defensive and had the nerve to say I was doing too much. He said that his sheets were already clean and it was an old stain on the mattress. I could not believe that this fine, handsome, well-spoken man wets his bed. I yeah. was devastated and turned off. <laughs> as tired as I was, I got back in my car. <laughs> All right, listen, guys. As tired as I was, I got back in my car and drove for another four hours back to my own house. We talked on the phone, but I can tell he's still embarrassed. I don't think we can get past this. If it's a medical issue, then I can be supportive and help him through it. But he will not talk about it with me. He's really the best man I've met in years. Please help me. What should I do? Hmm. Well, how nice of you uh, to drive all that way and just, you know, get right in, dive right in into cleaning and everything. Um, oh, my God. Uh, this would really be a deal breaker for me. Um, it, I don't think this guy is your soulmate. Um, I think you have to have more in common. And, and let's just start with the basics here. Um, you know, you got to be clean. You got to have some good hygiene. That is just the basic requirement in a relationship. I mean, the question to me, though, is this urination situation. What, what is Mr. Peabody. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? I mean, is, is this a medical, like, incontinence problem, or is he just lazy and, and just doesn't get up to go? You didn't make that clear in the letter. Um, he didn't seem to be bothered by it, though, when you pointed it out. Uh, if it is medical, he needs to see a doctor immediately. This can't go on in a grown man wetting the bed. you, you got to go see a doctor uh, and, and get this situation situation taken care of. I, I say um, try and talk to him again about it, you know, I, not in a nagging kind of way or anything, but in an adult, loving, caring, and concerned way. If he still doesn't want to talk to you about it, you might have to walk and leave him alone. Um, I, I, and it's unfortunate because you you think this guy is your soulmate and you really like this guy. Steve? Uh, I must jump right on this letter. I disagree, Shirley. Okay. This could be her soul, soulmate. Your soulmate can have problems and issues. People complete each other. Now, this woman had been dating this man. He's absolutely wonderful. Everything's going perfect. He always comes to her house. His, her house is spotless. She goes to his house, his house trifling. I know that's surprising. Filthy. You know, filthy. You know, he don't clean. He don't clean up. I don't know. Not every man I know is a germaphobic like you know who. A lot of hey. men are not that neat. You know, I like having a neat, clean house, but I have a tendency to throw some stuff down. And I let some dishes stack up. It don't bother me. It bothers my wife that dishes are stacked up. It have bothers my wife that I done threw something in the flow. Now, we don't we we not we haven't got to that yet. This, your style of comedy is a little bit more aggressive and forward. Just allow don't me get to get mad, Steve. to it. Come no, on. I just want him to allow me to get to it. As I don't you know, I don't be in his punk ass pranks. They punk ass punk. <laughs> yeah, they is now. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Once on, you interrupt the strawberry letter, then they punk ass. Back to come the on. letter. Well, you know, you get his ass out of it, sure. Tommy. Okay, talk to him. <laughs> I don't say nothing doing them pranks. Ain't never interrupted one. Ain't never they jumped on the phone. Hey, me too. Say something about me too. <laughs> Would you come on? I was. <laughs> he don't clean. That's not big of a deal. You, you can help him clean. You did it yourself. Here the problem. You pulled back the covers, Ugh. and it was some pee in the bed. Now, here what's wrong. <laughs> when you pull back, you didn't say how old he was. But listen to me. <laughs> Our pee is different from baby pee. This pee is strong. <laughs> Monionated. <laughs> it's got things in it. It's got pot liquor in it, right. penicilla, <laughs> collard green juice, Hennessy. All this is in there. He got all that. <laughs> yeah, insulin. He could be diabetic insulin. <laughs> it's all this is in that urine. <laughs> now, if it's been under that quilt and you open it up, it's going to be shocking. <laughs> you are not my soulmate. <laughs> and you can't have a soulmate with a weak bladder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, 
Here's the problem. You got back in your car and you drove back to four hours. You was disgusted and hurt that he didn't think enough about you to clean up before you came. He thought he cleaned up, but he done forgot. See, he been messy and junky so long, he forgot. He forgot all about the piece that he thought it was going to dry. What? He thought it'd be dry by now. Why are you making excuses? I'm just telling you what he thought. He figured by the time y'all get in the bed, it'll be that. Now, you ain't going to notice that. He don't know he that he's dating a bloodhound. Oh, God. That you going to smell it. What is that? So now you got you got a lot bagged up on it. This relationship is salvageable, and I will tell you when we come back how you can go about the business of salvaging this relationship. Because I don't know that you should throw a good man away because he has possibly a medical condition that requires the right help, and we can get somebody clean down. Right, she said that. She can be supportive and help him through it. All right, Uh, we'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 after the hour. I can't get back in bed with him. That's the subject. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Uh, Let's get to part two of your response to today's Strawberry Letter. I can't get back in bed with him. And the reason she can't get back in bed with him, because she done went to this man's house. He been coming over there all the time. She drove four out the man's house filthy. It's trifling. She helped him clean up. And then she go in the bedroom, pull back the sheets. She trying to clean the sheets, but it got a big pee stain on them. And it was strong. (laughs) Now, she say the man pee in the bed. Now, his seats was already clean, he said, and that's an old stain. Ugh. That stain I had peed on that last week. That's, even that's not fresh. <laughs> you tripping for? She couldn't believe this was fine. Handsome, well-spoken man wets the bed. How devastated. Mm. As tired as I was, I got back in my drove back another four hours. Yep. Back to my own house. Now, we talked on the phone, but I can tell he's still embarrassed. I don't think we can get past this. If it's a medical issue, then I can be supportive and help him get through it. But he will not talk to me about it with me. He's really the best man I've met in years. Please help me. What should I do? You got to get through to him. You got to get him comfortable talking about what's wrong. Look, I love you. I think we have something. And I'm willing to help you and share with you, share your life. But I need you to be open and honest with me. Tell me what's going on so I can help you with it. Because if you pee on me, see, <laughs> this is the real problem. What? She's scared to be laying up there and then he <laughs> pee on her. That I'm tell you right now, they, that's going to cause a breakup. <laughs> they don't like that, though. He's not getting back in that bed. They don't like that. <laughs> now, if you got to be in the bed with it to pee on, that's going to cut down <laughs> on the sexiness. Or what be cutting down? You all uh, snuggle all of them. You got this damn die for her. Cause your bladder ain't worth a damn. It's just over here with a hole in it. So you just peeing on people. You just in here. We just talking all of a sudden. All of a sudden, the, the bed get warm. And we just can't be doing it. We up just watching TV. We got the. We sitting up on the headboard. We watching TV in the bed. <laughs> We got the bowl of popcorn between our legs. Now, all of a sudden, oh. your, hop, your popcorn extra butter. <laughs> the hell is going on here? <laughs> Why is your popcorn hot and soggy? Oh, yuck. And why didn't what you tell it? me you were sitting over there peeing? <laughs> what? He doesn't why want to talk about it. I could have got up and got out your way. He doesn't want to talk about it. Just sit your ass up in here and just peeing in this bed. Uh-huh. <laughs> the bathroom is right there. She said she doesn't. Let me get them count these two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Twelve steps of you <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> just set your lazy ass up here and pee it again. Uh-huh. But you got to find a way to help him. Now, there's a couple of <laughs> solutions. I don't know how old is. I don't know if they're 80. Or they 40 and they done wrote this letter. I don't know. If you're 80, we're going to have to get a catheter or something on this boy. So he can just pee onto the pail that's on the floor. I don't know what it is. I don't know how old they are. But she drove four hours, so she ain't 80. I don't know no 80-year-old person can drive four hours without nod. I'm going to say four. I think you have something there when you say 40s. Do you? Yeah. She's gonna uh uh-uh. uh Well she got her own house and he got his yeah. own house. Yeah. So they both accomplished something. 
Did she pee before she took that long drive? <laughs> <laughs> now, we've had a story similar to this. That lady yes. that was going, that astronaut yes. lady there. Yes. That put that right. astronaut suit on and drove 900 <laughs> miles nonstop <laughs> and floor. just peed on herself <laughs> in an astronaut suit. <laughs> Got her hat on everything but the helmet on, just driving. <laughs> and peeing. Driving and peeing. Stopping getting gas and peeing. Didn't even get out. Give me eight dollars. I can make it. Well, we. I think you should say, look, I love you. I want to stay with you. But if you don't share with me what's going on, I can't help you. And if you won't allow me to help you, that's going to cancel our relationship. You're the best man I've met in a long time. And I believe I'm the best woman you've met in a long time. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's another woman living that's going to crawl up in that filthy-ass bed. Nope. No. <laughs> no. Not if you're going to be in there peeing on you. No. That's why I said they aren't safe. Now, let me so ask you something. Is there some kids somewhere that I don't know nothing about? What they got to do? She didn't mention kids. Well, I'm just asking because maybe the baby peed in the bed. <laughs> but I can tell you right now, that ain't baby you. Now, that grown man asked you, because when you peel back, you smell homeless. Yeah, she said she almost got sick from the sight and smell of it, Steve. That's a strong yellow. Then when she called him to the bedroom, he got defensive. It was his. Actually, yeah, I was down cold. at Venice Beach one time years ago, and I was trying to help this homeless dude out. I saw him rummaging through the waste can, so I bought him two sandwiches and gave them to me. But when he came over to get them from me, that boy was so strong. Good Lord. <laughs> Yeah, Good great. Lord, I de- I gave him two hundred dollars and a sandwich. <laughs> if you could back up now, cause man, it's on you. And then that <laughs> wind was coming off the ocean because we was down at Venice Beach. Uh-huh. I want you there to was stop nothing. Talking. Yes, the smell of I cotton want... candy, nothing was hiding this here. <laughs> okay, we get it. it was strong, you, uh-huh. you made strong. your point. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm talking about gifted. We really understand. He's standing there had to them say. duct tape shoes on too, and they had got hot on that asphalt. <laughs> Could you boy. please, Tommy, get your? I don't know what he had in that Let grocery car, but it was stinking too. <laughs> he had an air conditioner in there wrapped up in a top. I was trying to figure out where he was gonna plug his air up at. But Lord, no, you can't be standing in front of this air when you cut it on. That much I do know. What you cannot do is blow. You can't plug that air conditioner up that's in that grocery car. And stand in front of it and shift that wind towards people. We gotta go. <laughs> well, you go ahead and go, but I'm just telling you, that's I smelled that before, and that's how I know that there ain't no baby pee. All right, listen, uh, you can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's strawberry letter. You can email us or whatever, but wash first. <laughs> Uh, email us at Steve Harvey FM. Um, thank okay. you so much, Steve, for that uh, answer there. Yeah. Wow. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, now it's time for something funny, guys. We're going to talk uh-huh. about annoying things that grown people do while you're driving. So these, when you are driving. So these people are in the car with they're you. They're riding Jay. with you. Okay. Yes. Oh, just the passenger. Oh, okay. The passenger. Mm, or the back yeah. seat or the kids. Or uh-huh. just, yeah. Just mm-hmm. you the driver, so you got to focus. Yeah. On the mm-hmm. road. Yeah. And it's yes. just little stuff that uh-huh. gets on, just little things. Oh, man. Like, just that little. Like what? Like, Steve, like you driving, right? I can't stand people to point to stuff for me to look at. Yeah. Damn it, I'm driving. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, 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 look. Look. You missed How? it. You missed it. You missed it. Oh, you, 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 they got tomatoes on sale. Look, look. <laughs> yeah, Jay. Uh, uh-huh. That's real talk. Yeah, they right? got tomatoes on sale. <laughs> Good I'm going to see that sign and I'm <laughs> driving. Ain't no way in the world. One? Man, I can't stand for people to sing in my yes. car. That gets on my oh. nerves. Because first of all, oh you don't know God. the words to the song. Oh, my God. I can't stand it. And you don't sound nothing like. Nothing like the song. The song. Are you evil? Will you just change the station when they're singing? I'll put, I'll put it on talk. <laughs> Oh, talk radio? I don't care what they talk about. We start listening to talk the minute you open your mouth. <laughs> and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today. <laughs> you got one show I don't now. like when we going cross town to my auntie house. I done been there a thousand times. Mm. Uh, but my wife want to give me directions, though, on yes, how to get Go this way. 
Go yeah. this way. You take one direction. direction. Yeah. Take 45 and then take 59. If you take 59, we'll get there a little quicker. But you We've yeah, been you there in? several times. I know where I'm going. <laughs> I, know. I, I just don't like can't direction. Stand that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Steve. I know you Come got on. one. I can't stand <laughs> <laughs> when people drive in their damn car. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Looking over at an accident that they ain't in. <laughs> <laughs> and about to get us in one yeah. over here. Yeah. 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 I can't stand, I can't stand that, that, man. Mm-hmm. Get I you looking like over that. there, folks. I don't like I can't that. Stand. You know what else I can't stand, Steve? <laughs> that window, that window is not to be played with, okay? That up, that, <laughs> the up and down. That up and down? That's yeah. That's to the that, 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Or women with hot flashes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stand that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they got window locked. That's why they got locked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got to lock the window. Take the child lock off. I'm not, <laughs> not going to do, do it. it. Not going to do it. Okay, how grown you is. I'm not going to do it. You know, I, no, I can't stand. Right as I get my car washed, and I come pick you up and take you somewhere. If you eat in my car and drop anything, oh, 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 yeah. I don't know what it is when you driving. You always notice somebody dropping something. Yeah, in your yeah. Car. You got <laughs> chips. I see the chip fall down your shirt to the seat to my floor. But you okay. keep eating like it ain't down there. <laughs> okay, okay. I hate to go there. Come on now. Go ahead. I'm go driving ahead. in my car. Uh-huh. I look out the little. Just look out the little peripheral of my of my of my right side. Mm-hmm. Are you? You picking your nose? Wait a minute. Where are you? Where are you dusting that where off you to? Put that? Off you your fingers, yet. man. Where's no. that going? Ew. That's on my flow mat now, brother. That is gross. <laughs> but y'all didn't see it. You didn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I used to hate getting in somebody's car mm. and don't nothing work. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no radio. We ain't got no air. Uh. <laughs> we just sitting up in here hot. <laughs> in silence. <laughs> and it's starting to smoke. Hot, so you remember hot, from a long heat. time while? Yeah, boy, I used to hate that. <laughs> Man. I love Here's it. one. Okay, look in. Okay, you can have one. gum in your mouth. Yeah. I don't want to hear you click it. Oh, yeah. that's me. I don't want to hear you pop it. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to see you making bubbles out of it. Yeah. Mm. Damn it, just chew it, okay? Yeah. Just chew, chew it. it. That's it. That's why they call it chewing gum. You so ain't got issues. You know, you know what? I don't got bad. this problem right now. I, I want I want to drive okay. like Uncle Steve, but I, I don't have one. But right now, stay out my damn glove box. Why for you? Why is you why, in why? there? <laughs> what the hell made you click that two buttons and pull it down? What, what you in there? For? What are you looking for? Like you got something in here. When did you put something in there? It's like when you go to someone's house and they go to their medicine cabinet in the bathroom. Uh, 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 in 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 they got a damn glove box. <laughs> Tommy, what you have, man? Okay. I love it. This is what bothered me. Uh-huh. We pull out the driveway. Yeah. I'm rolling my son mm-hmm. in the back seat. He start hollering and crying. We can't go. We got to stop. Wait a minute. What's wrong? The Wi-Fi ain't working. I can't get it on my iPad. What? Got some money. You got one, Steve? Come on, Steve. You know, I used to hate. What? Don't ask me to use my car. <laughs> Please, man. You don't want your feelings hurt. You don't know how I really feel about you. Don't ask me to use my damn car. For nothing. For nothing. Yeah. Go to work. Yeah. Go to store. Yeah. yeah. He gonna find out where you really stand. And the phrase, well, it's just sitting there. That's why it's just sitting there. Yeah. My car. Because it's my car. And I ain't right. It. <laughs> well, it's just sitting there. So? Yeah. So, so what? Yeah. Here's one I hate. Here's one I hate. I'm backing out. Now, in, in order to back out, you gotta look back. Why yeah. am I looking at you? looking back at me backing out. <laughs> it don't take two of us to back out. <laughs> I'm looking. Close it up. And, and on, I'll on, tell you one thing I can't say. Don't diagnose my car. <laughs> How you know what's wrong with my car? <laughs> Sally, you got a bad time. How you know? 
<laughs> you just got in. Oh, Come on, Steve, yeah. close yeah, this it got, up. Boy, this one last one. This got something to do with using my car. Uh, this is what a friend did to me one time. Uh, Called a cab to my house <laughs> to ask me to use my car. <laughs> you should have took this oh, cab man. the way your ass wanted to go. <laughs> That's stupid. That's crazy. <laughs> You've been uh. there. All right, more of this crazy, ignorant show. The Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So did you guys hear about the five-year-old little boy in Florida who used his grandmother's um, Kindle and ordered a whole bunch of toys? Uh, How much money? Yeah. How much money? Uh, when the grandmother came back from vacation, there were about 25 boxes at her uh, door, uh, and more kept coming. And the little boy said, Grandma, what is that at our front door? <laughs> he been waiting Go ahead, uh-huh. little man. That's an ass whooping now. <laughs> he ordered about nine hundred and sixty dollars worth of toys. Um, this is crazy. You would never <laughs> see none of that. No. <laughs> how how old is he? He was just five. Five. Yeah. Oh, out man. of Florida. A little boy out of Florida. Mm. He still went to school that next day. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't he do anything. Uh, he wouldn't make six. He wouldn't make six with Anthony Brown. That's no, for sure. No. <laughs> okay. That's almost a thousand dollars. Yeah. You sit up there and, Grandma, what's that at your door? That's your ass. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you <laughs> think it is. <laughs> All right, I don't know. One of these boxes, and I see a toy in it, and I didn't order none. Uh-huh. Yeah. Boy, when they when they find out who name on that though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. She's going to send that all back. Well, um, I can't. I never all back. That's not that the most concerning thing. That's how smart thing. these kids are. Yeah, yeah. he's skilled, yeah, and he's skilled at uh, use... yeah, technology. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but, but technology. Here, here go my favorite line. Grandma, what's that on the iPod? <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, I love that. That <laughs> acted. Play it to the end, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads us to uh, this hour's comedy segment in, um, in which Jay wrote. Jay, explain it, please. Well, it has to do with millennials and now. A lot of them are becoming parents now. Mm-hmm. And so now they have to uh, tell their kids how tough they had it. <laughs> when, <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah. How, how tough they had it when they was mm. coming up. Like, like mm-hmm. for instance, yeah. See, boy, I didn't have a spaceship. I had to catch an Uber everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what they're going to be Y'all saying. Spaceship. Yeah. yeah. Now, you got a spaceship. I had to, I had to oh, call Oh, I see Uber. what you're saying, Jake. Uh-huh. What yeah. millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. What millennials. He's going to say to their kids when they go. Let them know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Try to make it look hard. Try to make it look hard. Hell no, I ain't got one. I just found out what the joke was. <laughs> you know, Come on, Junior. Come on, Junior. We'll I, play. Man, dog, I had all this other stuff. <laughs> what parents today, what millennials yeah. uh uh-huh, will say to their yeah. kids. Go ahead, yeah. Junior, you got one? I made it off of fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Okay? <laughs> fifteen. Yeah. Count them. Why, Count them. why don't you sit up here and talk about rough? Do you know back in the day sometime the cable would go out? <laughs> completely out. <laughs> Come on, Tommy. <laughs> Boy, let me tell y'all something. Y'all, 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 y'all don't know nothing about no real singer, see? Uh, you don't know nothing mm-hmm. about like Drake, boy. The Migos. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Huh? Sap Cardi B, Bruno yeah. Mars. Boy, y'all don't know nothing about no music. That was music, boy. <laughs> Kiki, do you love me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all singing this mess right here. Don't nobody know about Kiki. Do you love me? <laughs> yeah. These are what yeah, millennials th- will, are going to say to their kids. This is what millennials are going to say. So you just go, we had to FaceTime. Back in the day, all we had was FaceTime. You gonna sit up here and beam your ass over here <laughs> without asking me? Good one, you gonna Steve. beam hey, your one? Hey, beam. Well, hey. Come on, Jay. Oh, yeah, you sitting here talking about you got it rough. You don't know what rough is. I had to borrow money from my mama and my daddy. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, these are all so yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> Both parents. Uh, Come on, Junior. Say, say, what you complaining for? Huh? Uh-huh. When I was your age, uh-huh. I was living with my parents. <laughs> Do you hear me? Okay. When I was your I lived with them. Let me let me let me let me tell you something. Uh-huh. Let me tell you Come something. On. I Break didn't down. have but a hundred and three shoes when I was your age. A hundred and three <laughs> sneakers is all I had, boy. You're sitting up in here with four hundred pairs of shoes. You don't know how you got it. <laughs> 
I like it. So be yeah. Careful, huh? <laughs> These are what millennials uh, we'll say <laughs> will say to their man. kids. I'm sitting up in here. <laughs> and you don't even know how hard it was sitting up here, here having to email everybody. Yeah. Email and sending all these damn emails uh-huh. out. You sitting up in here reading my damn mind. <laughs> 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 Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what millennials are going to say to their kids and let them know they had a tough time. Okay. Gas was $4.50 back in that day. Yeah. 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 You paying a hundred dollars? We were struggling, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Come what on, Junior. Say. <laughs> you and that damn robot playing with each other. I had real friends. You hear me? I had real people. I had to play with. You got a damn robot. You just go play with. <laughs> boy, you don't understand. You don't understand. We had our pants sagging around our behind uh-huh. when we was coming through. You got them way back below your thigh now. <laughs> you don't know how good y'all got it. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. I'm complaining all the school time. Them, school them, school them, y'all. Complaining. All I hear is complaint. We had to carry our phones back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Now, yo, you ain't got the doubt. You all do is just blink your damn eyes and make a phone call. <laughs> you got a chip in your head. <laughs> Y'all don't know what it was like back then. When we wanted to have a booty, we had to have butt implants. Yeah. We was yeah. getting silicone and all kinds of stuff shot in our ass. <laughs> now all you got to do is sit up here and imagine an ass and here it is. <laughs> <laughs> People just looking at you and you making them see what you want them to see. Oh, wow. Millennials. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right you now. Good. I had no choice. I had to be black. Now you can switch up nationality anytime you want. Now your ass is Asian when you come over here. You're Mexican when you want to be. Whatever safe is for you. Whatever, whatever safe that. is for you. You just go and be that. I don't know what we didn't went through. We had to go through. Boy, I had to wear glasses. You don't understand that. You got your whole windshield prescribed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, come on, close it out. These are what millennials say to Oh, now kids. y'all don't want a president no more. We had damn Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to say. That's it. No say it. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time to... Have a little fun. Jay is here with yeah. uh, a segment called People Who Scare Me. Jay, what that's I what have is that a about? list, Steve, Tommy, Jr. Y'all can comment on this list. This is a list I put together. People who just frighten me when you see them. They haven't done anything to you, but you see them, they scare you. People who wear gloves for no reason. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I what saw one in the car the other day, <laughs> just driving. How do you know it's for no reason, though? Well, I mean, well, why, why do you have, I mean, like, inside the building? <laughs> <laughs> and it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> you got to love it, Jack. All right, here's another one that scared mm. me. Men who have tiny backpacks. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's in that? Where are you going? <laughs> Where are you going, dog? I got one for you, Jay. People that talk to themselves while they pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> that, make you, that make you nervous. Right there. Uh, <laughs> you don't uh, find that pump? I'm talking about going to be just talking. Just, so you man think serious. I'm going to do that. You got the wrong one now. Yeah. Uh, you ever seen them where it looked like they talking to two people at one time? <laughs> you back and forth? Yeah. But yeah. Are, are you sure they're not on their phone? Uh-uh. Nah. <laughs> they don't have Blue no tooth. head device on yeah. them at all. You know who scared you got me? One, you got one, Tommy. I'm going to tell you who scared me. People that be uh-huh. driving but got them big shades on and then they go down the side of the face too. You know, you know the wrap around, wrap around. Them blue blocks. Blue blocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I don't think they supposed to be driving. I really don't. They scare me. What you, what you got, Junior? What I'll you got, what man? I'll tell you what made me nervous. People who take uh, a lot of medication, just stay top, just stay popping pills. Every time you all turn day long. around, they always, yeah, take all mine man, at what is okay, going on right. with you? I saw that on your nightstand, man. What is that? I got one. I got one. People who rock back and forth while they sitting down. Oh, Have you seen oh, them? Yeah. yeah. You don't know if they're getting up or sitting down. They get up. Yeah, they get no, up they sit back down. Yeah. <laughs> 
People who <laughs> come on, Jeff, what? people who eat their food real slow, right there. Surely, yeah. 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 one like, thing at a time. I chew, I chew my food. I do not swallow it in hunks. <laughs> I inhale much. I got one. <laughs> mm. People that don't those. see nothing wrong with Donald Trump. That's scary. That's scary. That's scary. Nothing. That's very scary. You he cool with all of this. Wrong. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got one. Yeah. I like you that, Steve. People who dress they pets up just like them. Oh. Scary. You know, <laughs> what, is, what, what store weird. you go to to get the suit yeah. and then the dog got a suit, too? I don't <laughs> That's scary, right? There. Yeah, I've never seen that. That's no, you're scary. right. You're right. That All is right. scary. I, creepy. I got one. Anybody you seeing hugging a box? Hugging a just, box? Just <laughs> hugging it. Like, like it's got string around it, yeah. and they're hugging it real yeah. close to their chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you got, dude? Mm. I know you got people one. Who, people who don't, who don't mind walking outside. With no shoes on, all the time. Oh, I hate that. No, the bottom of their feet be so hard. They, yeah. <laughs> that'll make you nervous. All right, I got one. Stephen, you close it out. I got one real good. Uh, people who walk, but when they walk, their arms don't swing back and forth. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, he's scared. Yeah. Yeah, they're just coming at you like children in the corn. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't walking over towards me. Nah, it, arms ain't swinging at all. What you got, Steve? Close it up. <laughs> People balanced. scare me that's been sitting there mm-hmm. uh-huh. watching they dog uh-huh. for an hour. Lay on that mat. The dog ain't sleep. He busy. <laughs> then lick everything he got. Uh-huh. Then he get up. He gonna let him lick him in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. Uh-huh. Very uh-huh. scary. Happens scary. every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time for Comedy Roulette. Before we get into Yes, it is today. Let's (laughs) do it. (laughs) Jay. All right, Comedy Roulette, very serious. Comedy Roulette, very serious. Take four subjects, Mm -hmm. put them on a wheel, Mm -hmm. spun the wheel. Mm -hmm. That's right, spun it. (laughs) Where it stopped, because we are great at doing this. Mm -hmm. We're comedians. We'll do the damn thing. All right, here we go with the subjects. The party was off the chain. In fact, as soon as you left... Blank, blank happened. Oh. Blank mm. happened. All right. Number two, when to shut up. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Number three, like. old guys who live alone. That'd be Jay. That would be Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, we're, we're just being nice. The preacher's wife can't sing. All right. Uh, oh, we can do that, right. too. Come on, Kat. Too, Spin yeah. it. <laughs> oh. Is it going to be on Jay? Mm. Oh, single guys, single guys who live alone. Preacher's wife. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 number one, uh, the party was off the chain. In fact, as soon as you left, oh my God. blank happened. Dude, this was a party. As soon as you left, the preacher's wife's wig got caught in the ceiling fan. Man, it was going round and round and round. You should have been there, dude. They couldn't get that fan off. They couldn't get that fan off, man. man. Was she was just around. chasing it. And it was on high. Oh, my God. You should have been there, man. So you left. Man, that party was off the chain, man. In fact, as soon as you left, Uncle Herman got stuck in the bathroom door. We, we couldn't go to the restroom none the rest oh, of that man. night. Man, he's blocked. I, somebody pushed me. No. Oh, man, the party was off the chain. And let me tell you something. As soon as you left, dog, uh-huh. as soon as you left, somebody wastes all the whiskey on the floor. We mopped it up and wrung it out in the pitcher. Man, let me tell you something. Whiskey and mop water is the coldest thing I have ever had. Boy, you talking about you missed something. I'm trying to tell you. Whiskey, whiskey, mop water. Lord have mercy. Nasty. Boy, you think that was good? Huh? Let me tell you, this party, this party was off the chain. Uh-huh. This party was just, soon as you left. Uh-huh. I'm talking about it wasn't five minutes after you walked out the door. Keisha started stripping oh. on top of the washing machine. Ooh. 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 I'm trying to tell you. Come on, Cut that spin cycle on and was stripping. 
<laughs> boy, girl, came in there, boy. Come on, Jay, one minute. Man, that was a party. As soon as you left, they had a wheelchair race, right? <laughs> they went out in the street, and both of them got hit by an ice cream truck. Man, you should have seen Jay! What? Jay! Hey. It's funny. This part was something to tell you. Matter of fact, as soon as you left, uh, <laughs> Sister Warren front tooth shot at Herman Drake, <laughs> man, and he took a sip. Now we just wait on him to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. That party, the party was so obvious. Say, as soon as you left, man, everybody got hungry. I don't know what made. Butchie got the fish out the aquarium and fried it. Oh. The tiger fish, two Oscars, and an algae eater. I ain't lying to you. All right, uh, close it out, Steve. Hurry. <laughs> boy, that party last night, bro. Right after you changed, right after you left, Uncle Tate came in and had a one-woman wet T-shirt contest <laughs> with Sheila Neal. Right. We got to go, I boy. thought I just pulled it right on her, man. I said, I'll be dead. All right, Steve, coming up, closing remarks. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here were our last break of the day. Steve's closing remarks. What you got for us, Steve? Yeah, you know, uh, always, uh, hopefully, what these closing remarks are doing are kind of, uh, um, you know, just in, in encouraging people. Really, that's the whole thing. Uh, I've got a new thing that I'm going to release. Uh, it's called Brain Drops. I'm releasing a new thing that you can get online called Brain Drops. And what Brain Drops are, are a uh, abbreviated version uh, of my closing remarks. But I'm going to be releasing them every single day uh, for people just out and about. Sometimes, you know, you just you just need a little bit of some type of encouragement, some type of uplift throughout your day and that's all it's intended to be so be looking out for brain drops because i'm going to be releasing those uh shortly and so um today is just about success you know we talk about it a lot because those are the two things that i know that everybody wants everybody wants to be happy and everybody wants to be successful those two things most people i know want those things right there and so with that in mind, you know, I just uh, I want to just share this something really, really brief with you about success. Three things I want you to keep in mind on your road to success. There are a lot more, but I pulled out these three poignant things that I want people to really expect when it comes to success, because I think some people go about success the wrong way. They go about success expecting the journey to be successful. That's not the way to go about it. The journey is going to be challenging. The journey is going to have setbacks. The journey is going to have disappointments. The goal is to become successful. But please don't expect the journey to be successful. Understand what the journey is. So let me give you three things. Number one, adversity. The road to success is filled with adversity. The entire time, you will be having to deal with adversity. The entire time. There will be some smooth days for you. But the bulk of the days will have a challenge of adversity in front of you. Hands down, without a doubt, no mistaking it. The second part of success that I want you all to understand is rejection. Rejection is a part of success. See, when you go about success with the wrong attitude, thinking that all your steps are going to be successful, it's going to be very disappointing and disheartening for you. And in those disappointments and hardships and setbacks, you'll think, wow, I'm not successful. When you actually are, it's just the process of becoming successful. So rejection is a huge part of it. You're going to be told no on your way to yes. It's very rare that you just get yes, 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 yes. No, you're going to be told no along the road to your yes. So expect to be rejected. Know that it's not going to go your way. Know that everyone's not going to see your point. 
Know that everyone's not going to agree with you and know that everybody's not going to give it to you when you want it or even when you need it. Rejection is a huge part. So we got adversity and we got rejection. The third thing I want you to keep in mind to becoming successful are the sacrifices that are necessary. This is a hard one for a lot of people because sacrificing is difficult. But in order to get what you want, you're going to have to give up some things. That That is the exchange. Anytime you want something, you're going to have to give something to get it. There is nothing that you can want in life and you just go get without giving something. If you want more people to shake your hand, let's say that's what you want. Guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to extend your hand to more people. In life, you're going to have to give up something to get something. It's sacrifices. You've got to be very, very aware of the fact that something will always be required of you. You've all heard the scripture, to whom much is given, much is required. Well, listen to this. The requirements are ongoing if you want the giving to continue. If you don't want the giving part that God has for you, you're going to have to give up the requirements because to whom much is given, much is required. So you're going to have to get real comfortable with the requirements because guess what? You've been given so many things. So every time you want something, there's going to be a requirement on your part. Those are the three things I want you to focus on and think about. And I I don't want you to take it negatively, but just understand that's on your way to success. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Adversity, rejection, sacrifice. If you can get those three things mastered, you'll be successful. Most people are who are successful. They've mastered that. Those are my closing remarks. Drop it, baby. Oh. Drop it, drop it, drop it. I like know. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> drop my I like player. it quiet when I drop my I know. <laughs> I like it when I drop You keep on, you're going to be something one day. You know, sure. I believe I'm that try. in my heart. I believe that <laughs> sure. in my heart about you. I promise you I'm going to. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 